here we go, off for a ride on the Yak 40. How cool is this? Well, good morning and welcome to St. Petersburg in Russia, formerly known in Soviet times, of course, as Leningrad. And there's the man himself, Lenin, looking out over the city of St. Petersburg and his people. And it's back to the Soviet times that we're heading today because we're going to be taking a ride on an aircraft that was built back in the Soviet times and served in their hundreds, the entire Aeroflot network across the length of Russia from here in St. Petersburg in the west right the way across to the likes of Vladivostok over in the east. These days there's less than 10 of them operating and a couple of those are operating with an airline called Vologda Aviation Enterprise who are based at a place called Vologda surprisingly enough and we're going to be taking a ride on one of them today. Vologda operate two flights in Russia with several flights a week to St. Petersburg and also to Moscow from the town of Vologda. We're taking the entire flight from St. Petersburg down to Moscow with an overnight stop in Vlogda. Right then at the airport, Polkovo Airport, St. Petersburg, and we're about to go inside and see if we can get a ride on the Yak 40. Let's go. So through the initial security point to get into the terminal, we're at the check-in area now. Um, check-in doesn't open for a little bit. There's no sign of where it might go, um, where we might be able to check in for the flight, but apparently it opens in about 10 minutes, so we'll see. So there's a flight on the departure board up there from an airline called Somon Air, who are the um, national airline of Tajikistan. It was due to leave at 12.30 um, in the middle of the night last night. It's been delayed until 11 o'clock tonight. A 23 hour almost delay on that flight. Poor buggers, crikey, um, rather them than me. All right, so checking has just opened at 1.07, which is like literally the farthest point of the terminal. So let's head on down there and see if we can get checked in. It looked like today's flight was going to be a busy one. There's only a couple of flights a week to Vologda, all operated on the tiny Yak 40, so seats are at a premium. They were originally part of Aeroflot, the behemoth Aeroflot was back in the day um, as the Vologda division of Aeroflot. Well now, since the obviously the demise of the Soviet Union in the early 90s, they've been running as an independent company, as Vologda Aviation Enterprise. Um, and they operate a handful of these Yak-40s on flights from Vologda to here in St. Petersburg and down to Moscow. And today, well, we're heading down to Vologda, we've got a night there, and then we're heading continuing on tomorrow morning down to Moscow. Really looking forward to getting a ride on the um, Yak-40 actually. Um, they are so very rare these days, there is less than 10 in service anywhere in the world and six of those are with Bologda Avia. Um, and there's another handful with motor stitch down in Ukraine which you may have seen my video on before so I'll just pop a link up there if you want to uh, check out that video. But um, yeah, so we've got about half an hour now until the flight leaves down to Bologda. Grab myself a quick cup of coffee and then we'll be on our way. It was time to take a bus across the airport and get a look at the Soviet beauty that would be taking me across to Vologda today. My 
ride across to Vologda today that was on this Yak 40, originally delivered brand new to Aeroflot in 1976, making her 45 years old when I flew on it. You board the Yak 40 through its rear end, something that's always pretty cool. I do wonder how wheelchair passengers would get on boarding the Yak though. Once you're inside though, the Yak just oozes Soviet coolness. It's like taking a trip back in time to the 1970s and I just love it. So then on board the super cool Yak-40, this aircraft is almost 50 years old. One of the oldest aircraft that's still flying in Russia. And you can fly on one on this Vologda route, it's really cool. Proper Soviet style on board as well, I like it. for a ride on the Yak 40. After a short taxi, it was time to hear some pure Avgeek porn. The sounds of three Yvchenko turbofan engines spooling up right behind me. Now, while the Soviet engines do sound absolutely incredible, um, they aren't exactly renowned for their performance. With the rather leisurely climb rate, I did begin to wonder if we'd even make it above the treetops during our 90 minute flight. The flight across to Vologda today then took us east from St. Petersburg, eventually reaching a cruising altitude of 6,500 metres, or around 22,000 feet. Our flight time today was 1 hour and 22 minutes. Alright, so airborne out of St. Petersburg on the Vologda Aviation Enterprise Yak-40. How cool is this? Such a cool aeroplane to ride on this. Um, we've got about an hour and a half down to Vologda, or across to Vologda, is um, to the east of St. Petersburg, about an hour and a half's flight. This aircraft is amazing, isn't it? It's got the open overhead store, luggage storage and the incredibly old-fashioned Soviet type seats and this window, just look at the window. The big round window and the blind. Look at that. So you can get blue mood lighting on the plane. It's very similar to the Dreamliner, just a manual version of the electric window that you have on the Dreamliner. <laughs> See, Yakovlev were doing this years before Boeing. Um, we still seem to be climbing at a very, very slow rate, as is usual for these old planes. So um, I don't know if we're going to reach our cruising altitude today or whether we'll just sort of <laughs> end up starting our descent a bit early. I, think, I don't know. I have no idea. It's really crazy. Unbelievable. But it's such a cool plane though, the Yak-40, and this 2-2 config as well. Um, downside is it's very cramped, and if you can see where my knees are down there, like zero space whatsoever. I only appear to have half a seatbelt as well. So I've actually not got my seatbelt fastened and I haven't had a sense of it on the plane because I only actually have half a seatbelt on this plane so um, who knows what the crack is with that. Um, but yeah, fantastic isn't it?
So if you look closely around the aircraft, there's still quite a few signs. Um, and just quite how old and traditional this aircraft is. Just up here, look. These little hooks. Well, back in the day, they used to have curtains that you could open and close, like actual old-fashioned type curtains across the windows. And they've clearly been removed now um, in favour of these blue blind things. Um, and then, of course, up at the top, you've got the open overhead luggage racks, which are just common on um, a lot of Soviet aircraft of this sort of vintage. You just come in and chuck your bag up the top, like on a bus. Um, so it's still really cool, um, very nice and retro. And of course, the windows, these massive, massive round windows here. I love them. Much nicer than the... Um, typical modern aircraft windows that you get on a lot of aeroplanes so the fact that you've got these big old-fashioned round windows on are just incredible. The Yak-40 is one of my favourite Soviet aircraft um, to ride on. TU-154 being my other one. Um, probably I've not like, ridden on one of them for a while because they've not flown for a while but the Yak-40 somehow still keeps soldiering on in these parts of the world. It's incredible. So I've just been told off for taking photos on the plane. So I've got to be a little bit more discreet, a bit more careful, clearly. Um, don't want to get myself in trouble with the um, Russian flight attendant. <laughs> that would be a, a bad move, I think. But um, God, look at that view. Now, traditionally in Russia and most Soviet countries, in fact, um, altitude for aircraft was always done and always measured in meters as opposed to feet like it is done in the rest of the world. Now I thought that they changed that and that they now operate solely in feet like the rest of the world but at the moment we're at a cruising altitude of 6,500 meters which is like some random number of feet so I don't know What's interesting is like 21,330 feet, which is exactly 6,500 meters. So clearly they are still using meters for some stuff. Interesting. If you know about that, let me know down in the comments. I'd really be interested to hear that. So we've started our descent down into Vologda by the sounds of it, which is quite interesting. Vologda has a really short runway, it's like 1500 metres long, so it'd be fun to see how the Yak 40 copes with this really short runway down there. I have to say, the Yak 40 seems to drop altitude a lot faster than it gains altitude. <laughs> In just a couple of minutes, we've dropped 10,000 feet. It's quite clear why they give you the sweets to suck on. Because my ears are going crazy. We were soon on our final approach to the town of Vologda and it became clear how we would stop on such a short runway. Listen to the reverse thrust kicking in before we even touch the ground. And there we were then, flight one of this adventure complete, but with my adventure to small town Russia only just beginning. Baggage handling at smaller Russian airports is done by the passengers themselves. If you want your bag loading, well, you have to do it yourself. Thank you. 
wasn't quite sure why she was wishing me good luck. What sort of place had I come to? Then arrived at the Logda in the middle of nowhere, it seems. Um, ordered my Yandex, and it's going to be about 20 minutes to get here. So we're going to have a little wander around the airport here at the Logda. How cool is this? Very Soviet looking. Look at this, I found just outside the terminal building. An Illusion IL 18. <laughs> that is so cool, isn't it? This is the thing I like about um, Russia. They're very proud of their um, aviation history, and the, a lot of airports have these big. Um, Gate Guardians effectively just outside the airport. Very cool. Just imagine the number of people who have flown on this plane when it was flying for Aeroflot <laughs> all across the Soviet Union on these aircraft. Incredible, isn't it, really? The things this plane has seen, the history this aircraft has seen, and now it's stood here, guarding the entrance here at the Logda Airport. Very cool. I don't know if you can hear, but there's a, a Mild My 8 helicopter landing sort of over there. <laughs> this is proper, proper Soviet aviation paradise. This is Vologda. Mil 8, Yak 40s, IL 18s, incredible. All here, just like an hour and a half outside of Moscow. <laughs> Soviet hotel, this one, isn't it? But these corridors look. So let's have a look what you get for. I think it was about 15 quid a night. 15 quid a night here in Vologda. Ooh. That's all right, isn't it? It's okay. Nice little bed there. Lovely old-fashioned Sovietness around the room and a Samsung flat screen telly, which is what we might have been out Russian channels, I bet. Of course it don't have Russian channels. Oy. So here we go then, welcome to Vologda. About an hour and a half flight at, um, to the east of St. Petersburg. Um, Quite a nice ride actually on that Yak 40. Um, very busy flight though, surprising, although they do only have a flight, two flights a week to St. Petersburg. We've got a night here in Vologda, so I'm gonna drop my bags and very shortly we will go and have a wander around the town of Vologda and see what's here. Let's go and explore the streets of the town of Vologda. Look at this, look. An old Soviet tank. How cool is that? Just standing guard over the streets of Vologda. Memorial to the Great War of 1941-45, or the Second World War as we call it back home. But um, look at that, look. Awesome piece of kit. Alright, found a supermarket, so I'm gonna get some stuff for in the room tonight. Just up that road there is the railway station here in Vologda. And Vologda is actually a really important place on the railway network in Russia. It's on the main line between Moscow and Arkhangelsk up on the Arctic coast. 
which is one of the busiest lines in Russia. And this station sees 150 trains a day pass through on this stretch of railway. It's incredible. Um, so yeah, there you go. I love the home of railways, it seems. Right, back at the Hotel Volovda for the night. I don't know what it is about Soviet buildings. That lifts. But they all seem to have a certain aroma, so I did. Um, I just did the first time when I was in Russia in 1992 on my first trip. It was a smell that sort of just I don't know what it is. It's weird. I never smelled it anywhere else apart from in old buildings here in the former Soviet Union. Um, but hey, back in my room. Time to get ugh, started on me Russian beer and me Russian Cheetos. Good morning from the Vologda Hotel here in Vologda. Not the best night's sleep, I have to say. Um, aside from the fact that the room's been like an absolute sauna, the only way to get any fresh air in is to open this um, window a little bit, which, as you can hear, is um, not great when you're on a main road like this. So I've had really little sleep, maybe a couple of hours. Um, and to top it all off of course here in Russia at this time of year the sun starts rising at like two o'clock in the morning so um, clearly I've been awake since like half two so never mind we're going to try and get a taxi across to Vologda airport now and try and see if we can get on a second Yak 40 that will take us down to Moscow so um, let's go all right let's go It was time to head to the airport with a Yandex driver who seemed to be auditioning for a role in the Soviet version of the Fast and the Furious. After a hair-raising ride across town, I was dropped off at the airport before the Soviet Vin Diesel drove carefully away to his next fare. I said back out of Vologda airport, then waiting for the airport to open. It's still locked at the moment. <laughs> Flight doesn't go for about another hour and a half, but I wanted to make sure I got here. Um, as it turned out the way he was driving, we didn't really need to worry, we were here in record time. Um, but obviously the airport's not open yet, so we just got to hang around here for a little bit. Um, yeah, and wait for it to open. Wait for it, okay. The airport at Vologda is absolutely incredible. It's like a time capsule from the 1970s. He 
you check in for your flight at this kiosk which serves the single flight a day to either Moscow or St. Petersburg. Thank you. So I all checked in, got my boarding pass. I'm ready to go. This airport is just amazing. A lovely, a lovely little 1970s retro feeling airport. Still got my bag. Because on the Yaks, you obviously take the bag out to the aircraft yourself and store it in the back of the plane. So um, it's something a little bit different. Hopefully very soon we'll be heading through these doors here, going through security and getting out onto the second Yak of the trip to take us down to Moscow Vnukovo International Airport. My ride down to Moscow was the same Yak 40 I flew on the day before. And just like the day before, my flight today used the self-service baggage handling system. It was time to taxi to the short runway and experience once again the ear blistering climb performance of the Yak 40. The flight down to Moscow today then took us 1 hour and 28 minutes, cruising at 6,200 metres or around 20,000 feet. So then airborne from Vologda on day 2 of our Yakadi Yak Yak 40 adventure. And it's the same plane that I flew down to Vologda down on, on yesterday, the same Yak 40, I'm just a couple of rows forward. Another beautiful morning here in Russia. Fantastic view out over that Yak 40 wing. I just love these aircraft, they're really cool to ride on, like proper old Soviet machinery. If you want to get a ride on one of these by the way, there's really two options within range of Europe. You can fly on Motosic in Ukraine, who send them on a couple of their flights down there. Although they haven't flown them in a while, um, since the whole Covid situation, they've kind of gone back to just using the Antonovs. Um, or you could fly on Vologda, which is this airline on this route between St. Petersburg and Moscow and Vologda. Um, depending on where you come from, of course, getting a visa for Russia can be a little bit tricky, but there's plenty more to do. So aviation stuff like this, Russia is still the place to be, really. Um, and I really cannot recommend highly enough coming to get a ride on one of these beautiful old airliners while they're still flying. I don't think they're going to be around forever, although they certainly seem to have been around forever so far. Um, but I don't think they're going to last forever going forward, so um, you might want to be considering trying to get a ride on these while you still can.
My ride from St. Petersburg to Moscow cost me £95, or around $130 US dollars. Even with the overnight stop in Vologda at £15, it represents fantastic value for money for the chance to ride on such a rare airliner in commercial service. The CYOB or Carry Your Own Bag service is even in use at Moscow's Venukovo Airport. This did mean that I get to skip the baggage claim though. As always, I'd like to say a big thanks to my patrons. You can join them at the link on the screen now for access to my WhatsApp group, live weekly Zoom calls with me, and much more. to Moscow and to Vnukovo International Airport which is one of the airports in Moscow I've not been to yet it's just to the west of the city and um, that was a really cool ride down wasn't it with Vologda on the um, Yak 40 let me know what you thought to them down in the comments below and would you travel to Russia to truck to fly on an old aircraft like a Yak let me know down in the comments in the meantime as always my taxi's here so <laughs> thanks for watching take care I'll see you on the next one bye for now